All right, what's the factored form of this expression? Um, notice this, this is gonna be something, if you try to factor this, um, it's, it's gonna work out kind of funny. How do I mean funny? Um, well, let, we could try it. Let's first try it. We could say 20 times negative 12, a times c, gives you negative 120. No, I'm sorry, it gives you negative 240. See how giant that number is? That's going to break down a million different ways. Okay, now we can try and break it down. We know we're going to have one of each. Um, let's just try, let's say, 1 times negative 240. Those combine to be negative 239, way too far apart, right? What if we did 20 times 20 times negative 12? Too close together, right? What about 10 times anything? Uh, 10 times negative 24, those combine to be negative 12, still actually too close together. Um, so let's just, let's just run through it uh, consecutively here and watch what happens. Um, okay, one times ne negative 240, no, um, negative one times 240. 2 times anything, 2 times negative 120, or negative 2 times positive 120. 3 times anything, yeah, 3 times negative 80, or negative 3 times positive 80. 4 times anything, sure, 4 times negative 60, or negative 4 times 60. 5 times anything, yeah, 5 times 48, negative 48. Or negative 5 times positive 48. Yeah, 6 times anything. Let's just keep going. 6 times anything. 6 times negative 40. Or negative 6 times positive 40. Uh, 7 times anything. No, it's not a multiple of 7. But 8 times anything. Yeah, we could do 8 times uh, negative 30. Or negative 8 times positive 30. And those two go together, actually, to be the 22 that we've got here. So let's try that. Okay? Let's try that. Uh, I'm going to erase all this. We have that list. And we could say, okay, we're going to rewrite this now as 20x squared. Uh, minus 8x plus 30x minus 12. Now we're going to group them. Say, what can we factor out of these? Okay, well, we can factor out a 4x from this first one. 4x. And what's left? 5x minus 2. And what can we factor out of this next one? We can factor out a 6, it looks like, out of both of them. Okay, so plus 6. What are we left with? We are left with a 5x minus 2. Great. But when we put this together, and that's not, there's nothing wrong with that, but watch what happens. When we put this together, we say... 4x plus 6, what we factored out, times 5x minus 2, what we left inside. Hmm, I don't see that as a choice. Why don't I see that as a choice up top? Weird. Nope, not weird at all, actually, because look. This is not fully factored. There's a 2 that you could pull out of that. Okay, so if you pull the 2 out of that, and we said equals, let's pull the 2 out of that, and we say, if we put that 2 in the front, and then we factored a 2 out of it, what would we get left inside? We'd get 2x plus 3. And then that original other one, which was 5x minus 2. That's a choice somewhere. 2 times uh, 5x minus 2 and 2x plus 3, that's A. 
So you can do it the regular way and factor it and then say, oh, well, let, I can look at the resulting binomials and see if there's anything else that can factor out. Um, but what you really should be doing, what you really should be doing is first examining the original problem and saying, is there anything that I can factor out? Because if there is, and if we look at that original problem, we can say, oh yeah, all of those numbers are multiples of two. So what we get as a simplified thing is we get two parentheses, and now what's left inside? 10x squared plus 11x minus 6. And now, instead of trying to factor two, negative 240, you're really only factoring this times this, or negative 60, and it becomes much easier to factor. Okay. So A is still the right choice, but by doing it this way, with that 2 factored out, then you could say, okay, now we're looking for two numbers that go together to be, add together to be 11. And if we listed the factors out now, we could say 1 times negative 60, or negative 1 times positive 60, 2 times negative 30, or negative 2 times positive 30, 3 times negative 20, or negative 3 times positive 20, 4 times negative 15, or negative 4 times 15, and that's the 1, if you notice. Those two add together to be 11. And then by doing it the way that we had done it with, proper, with prior problems, you would end up factoring this right here into the two binomials that you get up there with the 2 sitting out front, and you've got to make sure you keep the 2. Okay, it's going to be easier for you if you identify, oh, I can divide these both by whatever and factor a common number out. Okay, so we're going to do that on the next one because that's what these are doing. And so for number 53, let's do that. Let's look at all of these numbers. 80, negative 210, negative 245. Well, I can see they all divide by... Five. Okay, so I'm going to list all of the numbers divided by five. I'm going to say, I'm going to do it just above it. Five, parentheses, and then what is 80 divided by five? It's 16. Y squared minus, what is negative 210 divided by five? Well, if I want to divide by five, I can divide by 10 and then double it. Dividing by 10 is negative 21. Doubling it is 42, so 42y. And that works even if it's uh, like this. Watch, 20, 245, negative 245. I can divide it by 10. That becomes negative 24.5. And then I can double it. And doubling negative 24.5, doubling 24 is 48, so negative 24 is negative 48, plus doubling the half is another one, so negative 49. So it still works like that. Okay, so that's minus 49. And now I can see that the only thing that I can divide this by is 7, or 7 times 7. This doesn't have a 7 in it, so that's already factored. I factored out as much as I can factor out. So we divide everything by 5, and now what we're dealing with is simply factoring out, um, let, me, let me write the 5 here, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the two numbers that are here, 16 and negative 49, and we can multiply those together to get the term that we need to list out the factors of. This is a tough problem. This is big. Um, I mean, it's, it's the same process. It's just going to be a, a quite a number of steps here because you're, you're multiplying now negative 49 times 16. And so let's do that over here. Negative 49 times 16. And we've got to factor that. So we say 6 times 9 is 54. Carry the 5. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 5 is 29. And then 0 placeholder, 1 times 9 is 9, 
1 times 4 is 4. We add them together, we get 4, 8, carry the 1, 784, negative 784. Um, and that is a little bit intimidating to, to factor, negative 784. Okay, so I'm going to show you something that I didn't show you in class, but I'm going to show you here. Um, essentially, watch what's going on here. We've got negative 784 by doing, and let's just talk about the 784 for a second, okay? Um, by doing 16, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times negative 49, which is times 7 times 7, and then we'll put that negative 1 out front, okay? So if we can somehow group these things together in such a way that we get two different numbers that are that far apart, then we'll have what we need. So I'm going to just grab some of these numbers. I'm going to grab uh, these two numbers. That gives me 14. Okay, And these two numbers, 7 times 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. Okay, One of them would be negative, obviously. But if I said that one's negative, because I know that we need more negatives, because that's negative, then what do these add up to be? Well, they add up to be negative 42. Okay, I just grabbed a couple of numbers and tried it out to see what a combination that happened to work. Okay, so those are the two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 784 and are going to add to negative 42. How did I do that? Let's look at that one more time. Okay, I took the two numbers we multiplied. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, after Sorry, let me do this again. Um, after factoring out the 5, because I could see that all the numbers in our original polynomial were multiples of 5, so we factored out the 5. Then what we got was 5 times 16y squared minus 42y minus 49. And what I said is essentially, we're going to get a number when we multiply 16 together, and 16 is just 16 is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times negative 49, which is really times 7 times 7, and then we're going to leave a negative 1 out here to turn the whole thing negative because we got to have a negative number. But watch, if I grouped if I grouped two twos and a seven together, and then grouped these two twos and this seven together, I'd basically get 28 twice. And 28 and negative 28 will cancel out to be zero. That's no good. Right? We can't get a zero. Um, we need a negative 42. And so I said, I can't group them equally like that. Um, so what do I need to do? I'm going to uh, erase this a second and list those out again. It was like negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's from this 16 up front. Times 7 times 7, which is from this. And since that was a negative number, we've got this negative here as well. Just to be able to put that somewhere. Okay. So then I've got to group them together. And I'm like, well, if I can't group them equally, then uh, how can I group them? So I just grabbed a few numbers. I should say, what if... What if we did, what if we grouped those two together and what would we have left? I just tried it out. Those two together goes to be 14. And multiplying together what's left is 8 times 7 is 56 times a negative 1 is negative 56. And that just happened to work. So you can do a little trial and error there. Okay. Anyhow, uh, then what we've got is we're going to write out. 5 times, we've still got the 16y squared, but that negative 42y is going to break down to be positive 14y and negative 56y minus 49. Now when we group them, we can say group that one and that one, that one and that one, 
we've still got a five out front. Okay, and say, okay, times, and what do we have inside? What can we factor out from 16y squared and 14y? We can factor out a 2y from each one. And if we divide 16y squared by 2y, we get 8y. If we divide 14y by 2y, we get plus 7. Okay, what can we factor out of negative 56y minus 49? Remember, if the first term is negative, we need to factor out a negative. So what are we going to factor out? We're going to factor out a negative, and those are both multiples of 7. So we're going to factor out a negative 7. What do we get left inside? We get a positive 8y and a positive 7. And that's a good sign because we have the same term twice there. So what do we get? We get, as our final answer, we get 5 times the first term that we factored out, 2y, and the second term we factored out, 7, times whatever we had left, 8y plus 7. And that's what we've got. So we've got 5. And let me box this got 5 times 2y minus 7 times 8y plus 7, and that is choice C. That was a big, long problem. I understand that. Um, you're going to have to be challenged to do hard, hard problems. I'm not necessarily speaking about this particular test. You know, you might not get this on the test, but um, this is you're going to need to know how to do these problem types and say, I can apply what I know about the easier numbers and just take it with the bigger numbers that are more complicated, more steps, but I still am doing the same thing. And I can do that with bigger, harder problems. I know what the steps are. I just keep applying the same steps the way that I did with the simpler ones. So that was a long problem. Hope that makes sense.